So I wanted to do a quick little tutorial, kind of giving an overview of how the 2D sprite stacking method works and how it could create pretty realistic looking 3D worlds using very, very minimal amounts of sprites and artwork. Uh, I think this method is especially useful for people who are more uh, programmers than artists because you could get a pretty nice effect and pretty convincing looking 3D objects and worlds using a very minimal amount of sprites. Um, so. As an example here, I have my engine that uh, leverages this 2D sprite stacking effect. And these trees here, while they look pretty cool, they're really just made up of two sprites, uh, like a brown tree trunk sprite and like a green tree top sprite. And there is some random scaling and rotation going on, but pretty much it's just those two sprites. And the rest is being handled by the engine and by this 2D sprite stacking effect. So the question is, how does this 2D sprite stacking effect work? Like what is actually happening? Uh, and one way to think about it, uh, sometimes it's, because it's sometimes pretty hard to visualize, like how could just two sprites end up creating this complicated shape or like these crates over here? It's pretty magical. Um, but essentially, I'm gonna run through a quick example of like what's actually happening when it's rendering this. So it's starting by, okay, let's say the tree is at this specific position. So that's the first level of the tree. And then we're gonna start drawing further uh, tree trunk sprites on top of this. And we're gonna be flaring outward. So we're not quite drawing it right on top. We're drawing it slightly offset, uh, like a little bit. And that depends on how high up you are. So here we go there. Then we're gonna draw another one and it's offset a little more. Then we're gonna draw another one and it's offset a little more. Another one, so on and so forth. You're basically offsetting and the higher up you go, the further from that origin point of the object you're getting. Uh, so you might get something like this, and then eventually you're gonna draw the treetop, and you get something like that. So just using that approach, you can see how it kind of builds up this tree. It's flaring outward, and now it looks like we created a 3D sprite, or we created some sort of sprite of a tree in this pr particular POV, and yet all we did really, we had a tree trunk sprite and a treetop sprite, and we were drawing them flared out uh, on the y-axis going as you go further up the tree, you're going further away from the origin, and that's how it creates this particular effect. So uh, let's imagine for a second we were on a different angle or a different point of view from the tree. Uh, if we were like standing on the left-hand side of the tree and looking at it from like a side point of view or something, it might look something like this, right? So now we're flaring out on the x-axis, and you get something like this. So uh, your tree looks something like that. And that's basically all that's happening, right? So the only thing that's changing is this offset. So as I rotate the camera here, if you want it to look convincing as you rotate the camera and keep, keep things looking 3D, really the only thing that's happening is this offset angle is changing, right? The vector of offset is changing. Like when you're looking at it head on, it's going all on the Y axis, pretty much is pushing up in the Y, and there's no change on the X, right? And then here it's pushing out on the X, but there's no change in Y. And then, you know, midpoints are some diagonal of that. Uh, and so basically the way it works is you're taking the camera angle and you're deriving whatever angle this stuff should be at. So maybe it's gonna be like in this direction, or this direction, it, it's entirely dependent on what angle you're looking at. But when you do it like that, the POV always remains the same. So as long as it's tethered to the camera angle, it'll always look uh, correct, basically. Other games, it's worth mentioning, also do an effect where uh, you might want it where you're looking exactly top down. And so if the player's here, then the tree's gonna look like this. But then if the player's over here, the tree will like flip. Uh, so that's another approach, but really the magic of it is just based on the camera, you're changing this offset in some way so that it obeys 3D-ness, essentially. Um, so another interesting thing about this is depth, right? So we only have 2D sprites here being drawn one on top of the other. How is it possible that it has some sort of notion of depth? Like how is it that if the player comes here, it's behind the lamppost, if it comes here, it's in front, if I swing this around, it's like always where it needs to be. Uh, the tree, I 
go under the tree, the lamppost, you can see just about blocks the tree, but then if I turn this way, the tree will block the lamppost. Like, how is that all working if this is all just 2D stuff? Um, and your first impression might be, well, don't you need some sort of complicated depth algorithm where it's basically figuring out, okay, my camera's over here, my camera angle is this, the lamppost is closer than the tree, so we're gonna draw the tree first and then the lamppost. Like it's trying to figure out what's what's in front of what. Um, that would be true if we were drawing each object individually one at a time, right? So if I were drawing each lamppost, like one lamppost, then a tree, then a lamppost, then a lamppost, then a tree, it, it would have to be that way where you'd have to derive uh, what objects are in front of what. But we don't have to do it that way, right? So if you just let the engine draw everything level by level instead of object by object, what ends up happening is it just works. It's kind of a side effect of you drawing level by level. So what do I mean by that? Um, if I were to take this tree, what's happening on the engine side is we're drawing each tree at, at its level one first, and then we're gonna tack on a level two with that offset and then there's gonna be a level three and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna bother doing it for all of them, but you get the idea, right? So it's this is how it's drawing the trees in order. Uh, it's not drawing all of one tree and then all of another tree and then all of another tree. It's actually doing individual pieces at once. Um, what ends up happening with this method is, let's just imagine we had a tree right here, like right behind, and this was like a, a red tree for whatever reason. It was right behind this other tree. I'm gonna already put its three layers because it's already drawn three layers. So both trees already have three layers drawn. And now I'm gonna draw the fourth. I'm gonna draw the fourth. So now we've drawn the fourth for both of them. Now I'm gonna draw the fifth layer. Uh, and I'm gonna draw the fifth layer of this one. And as you can see, what's starting to happen, if we draw the sixth layer, and then the sixth layer of this one. What's starting to happen is this tree is now blocking the red one. Um, and the only reason that happened is just because if we, at any given point on the screen where these two are colliding, this brown tree's level is gonna be higher than that tree, right? So it's comparing, what is that? Like the level two or three of this red tree is being compared against this level six of the brown tree and the brown tree wins right so the brown tree is going to be drawn after as long as you're going in order of height drawing everything at level one then level two then level three this is going to be a natural outcome of that is that if you have something behind another object then where they collide the thing in front is always going to win based on depth right and again uh that's because this is a higher level than this, that red thing. So that red thing was drawn, that red sprite was drawn previously uh, as opposed to this brown thing with, which was just drawn recently because it's higher. Um, and that's just the nature of view, right? Like if, if an object is in front of another object, uh, then naturally the higher part of the front object is gonna be colliding in view with the lower part of the object behind it. Right, that's just kind of a natural side effect uh, of how perspective works. So in that way, it basically maintains depth and you don't have to do any depth calculation at all or any crazy determination of what's in front of what. It just kind of handles that on its own. Um, and so it's worth mentioning that this player kind of looks like one single sprite, right? And it is true that this, the player is handled a little bit differently than everything else because it is just one sprite. But really the same applies. Uh, behind the scenes, I'm actually cutting this sprite into little levels. So it also obeys the system of like everything being drawn level by level. So this player is actually just a set of slices of this sprite and it's being drawn such that it, it still obeys those qualities of what I just mentioned. So really uh, those two those two kind of broad ideas, depth and kind of the offset method, that's kind of how you get this effect. And it ends up creating pretty convincing looking worlds for 
pretty simple amount of artwork. Um, and I highly recommend it for anyone looking to make a game that's a little bit better than just 2D. It's something that's very simple if done correctly and works pretty nicely. So yeah, thanks for watching.